Well, let's get more now from France 24's Luke Schrager, who's in Zaporizhia. Luke, uh, what's the situation like in Zaporizhia where you are? Well, here in Zaporizhia, we've seen small groups arriving throughout the day. You may just be able to see me. A few vehicles have literally just started to arrive uh, just a, a few moments ago. We've been seeing this uptick in activity. People obviously taking, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously taking advantage of the ceasefire that has gone into place to try and get out of uh, the largely Russian-controlled Mariupol. Now, uh, there, you may just be able to see me there, one of those vehicles. You can see in some of them, at least the windows that are just over my left shoulder there. <clears throat> White, ri <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. White ribbons tied to the door handles or the mirrors, and in some of the windows, the word "dirty," meaning children, in the hope that uh, they will not be fired upon. This is something we've seen elsewhere throughout the conflict as people try to evacuate. Now, you can see behind me this zone at uh, on the outskirts of Zaporizhia. It's uh, a uh, really a commercial complex that's been given over to the use of a, a welcome centre. There are a lot of uh, NGOs uh, in attendance here, representatives of the United Nations, Doctors Without Borders, UNICEF and OCHA. And uh, we spoke to a few Ukrainian psychologists who were on hand as well. Obviously, there was a great deal of trauma that these people will have been going through, uh, trapped as they were in the largely destroyed city of Mariupol. We spoke to a few of them earlier. Why don't we listen to and see what they had to say? We went to natural water sources to get water about three kilometers away. People were buried by their friends and relatives in the street about half a meter down so they can come back and bury them properly later. Yeah, back to the next question. Thanks. There were burned buildings. Four strikes hit a building and then there was no more flat. There was no more glass in the windows. I'm feeling a lot better now. I cried a little. Yes, I cried a bit when I saw our soldiers at the checkpoint. OK, Luke, I mean, as we could hear there, I mean, a huge sense of relief uh, from people and, and you know, uh, still more evacuees uh, awaited. What do we know about the progress of getting people uh, from uh, 200 kilometres away, which, let's face it, Mar Mariupol's not exactly next door to Zaporizhia. What's the progress been like getting people from there to where you are? Well, there has been very little information coming through. Arrivals, as we have seen, coming in uh, in dribs and drabs throughout the day, uh, but very little information. There are a lot of people talking about this uh, convoy coming from the Azovstal steel complex. Now, we've heard estimations given from two to three hours, a time uh, frame that has long since passed until ultimately possibly Tuesday. Uh, the United Nations has been handling uh, the situation along with uh, the International Red Cross Committee. It's not yet known exactly how many people will be on board board, or, or indeed whether it's just a matter of, uh, of women and children or whether there will be men with them. What we do know is that 100 people did manage to leave the complex uh, to make their way through uh, Russian-controlled territory and uh, back into Ukrainian hands for the first time since uh, the Russians largely took uh, the now largely destroyed city of Mariupol. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for bringing us the latest there from Zaporizhia. France 24's Luke Schrager, thank you so much.